With tensions between countries being inevitable, nuclear weapons, it seems, are also inevitable. They are considered to be the most destructive weapons in the world. Their explosions are so powerful, just one nuclear bomb could destroy an entire city. Nukes, as nuclear weapons are known, are far more damaging than even the biggest normal non-nuclear bombs. There's quite a lot to get your head around when it comes to nuclear weapons, so in this video we're going to try to do just that, and hopefully answer the ultimate question, what if all nuclear weapons were to explode at once? So what exactly are nuclear weapons? In short, they're extremely powerful explosives. If you think back to your science lessons at school, you may remember the words atoms and isotopes which are involved in the process of triggering a nuclear blast. A nuclear weapon is designed to release energy in an explosive manner as a result of nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, or a combination of the two processes. Fission are usually referred to as atomic bombs, and fusion weapons are known as thermonuclear bombs, or more commonly, hydrogen bombs. These are usually defined as nuclear weapons in which at least a portion of the energy is released by nuclear fusion. When bombarded by neutrons, certain isotopes of uranium and plutonium will split into atoms of lighter elements. This is the process known as nuclear fission. In addition to this formation of lighter atoms, on average between 2.5 and 3 free neutrons are emitted in the fission process, along with considerable energy. As a rule of thumb, the complete fission of 1 kilogram of uranium or plutonium produces about 17.5 kilotons of TNT equivalent explosive energy. The nuclear weapon's significance may be best appreciated by the coining of the words kiloton, 1,000 tons, and megaton, 1 million tons to describe their blast energy in equivalent weights of the conventional chemical explosive TNT. For example, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan in 1945, containing only about 64 kilograms 140 pounds, of highly enriched uranium, released energy equaling about 15 kilotons of chemical explosive. That blast immediately produced a strong shockwave, enormous amounts of heat, and lethal ionizing radiation. Convection currents created by the explosion drew dust and other debris into the air, creating the mushroom-shaped cloud that has since become the virtual signature of a nuclear explosion. In addition, radioactive debris was carried by winds high into the atmosphere, later to settle to Earth as radioactive fallout. The enormous toll and destruction, death, injury, and sickness produced by the explosions at Hiroshima and three days later at Nagasaki was on a scale never before produced by a single weapon. In the decades since 1945, even as many countries are developing nuclear weapons of far greater strength than those used against the Japanese cities, concerns about the dreadful effects of such weapons have driven governments to negotiate arms control agreements such as the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963 and the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons of 1968. Among military strategists and planners, the very presence of these weapons of unparalleled destructive power has created a distinct discipline, with its own internal logic and set of doctrines known as nuclear strategy. The first nuclear weapons were bombs delivered by aircraft. Later, warheads were developed for strategic ballistic missiles, which have become by far the most important nuclear weapons. Smaller tactical nuclear weapons have also been developed, including ones for artillery projectiles, landmines, anti-submarine depth charges, torpedoes, and shorter-range ballistic and cruise missiles. By far, the greatest force driving the development of nuclear weapons after World War II was the Cold War confrontation that pitted the United States and its allies against the Soviet Union and its satellite states. During this period, which lasted roughly from 1945 to 1991, the American stockpile of nuclear weapons reached its peak in 1966, with more than 32,000 warheads of different types. During the 1990s, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, many types of tactical and strategic weapons were retired and dismantled to comply with arms control negotiations. The number of nuclear weapons in the world is actually down from 70,000 in 1986 to around 9,500 today. In July 2017, it looked as though the world was a step closer to becoming nuclear weapon free when more than 100 countries endorsed a UN treaty to ban them altogether. But countries with nuclear weapons, such as the US, UK, France, and Russia, boycotted the treaty. The UK and France said that the EU agreement did not take into account the realities of international security and added that nuclear deterrence had been important to keeping peace for more than 70 years. 
While countries like the UK and US are reducing their nuclear stockpile, experts say they are still modernizing and upgrading their existing armory. Today, Russia has the highest number of nuclear weapons, estimated at 6,490 warheads. 4,490 of these are active and 2,000 are retired. The United States follows closely behind with 6,185 nuclear weapons, 3,800 of these are active, and 2,385 are retired. France comes in next with 300 all active, then China with 290 all active, followed by the United Kingdom with 200 active nuclear weapons, Pakistan with 160, India with 140, Israel 90, and lastly North Korea with 30. This leaves us with a world total of 9,500 active nuclear weapons. So if these figures are accurate and there are no hidden nuclear weapons anywhere else, what would happen if every nuclear weapon in the world today was detonated? Bearing in mind the yields of these weapons vary considerably. The US and Russia, for example, have hyper-powerful thermonuclear weapons, whereas North Korea are more likely to use the plutonium fission-style devices. One of the most powerful weapons in the US arsenal is the BAD-3, which has an explosive yield equivalent to 79 Hiroshima Little Boy atomic bombs worth of energy. If one of these B-83s went off in Moscow, detonated at the surface, it would leave a crater 420 meters across and 92 meters deep. Almost instantly upon detonation, a gigantic fireball would appear, 5.7 square kilometers in size and reaching temperatures up to 83.3 million degrees Celsius, 150 million degrees Fahrenheit. Using up to 50% of the entire warhead's energy, it would also be accompanied by a huge pressure wave. All buildings within a 16.8 square kilometer area would be totally flattened. Thanks to the thermal radiation, which uses 35% of the explosive's energy, everyone within a 420 square kilometer region will receive third degree burns, which will only be painful for a short time as their nerve endings will be completely destroyed. Then there is the ionizing and fallout radiation. Assuming there's no wind at the time, we can assume that an area of 20.6 square kilometers will be so heavily irradiated that 50 to 90% of people in it will die from radiation sickness. Now, what about if all the nuclear weapons explode? If each of the devices hit land and detonate at the surface, assuming they are evenly spaced out across the world's cities and towns, this would annihilate 94 kilometers of land immediately. 232,000 square kilometers of infrastructure will be blown away. That's about 295 metropolises the size of New York City turned to dust. So, at the very least, hundreds of millions, perhaps billions, will die within the first hour. There would be a near 100% reduction in solar radiation reaching Earth's surface for several years, meaning the planet would be shrouded in perpetual darkness for that time, although light would creep back in slowly over the next few decades or even centuries. This will inevitably stop photosynthesis. Only the hardiest of plants would not die out, which would lead to a collapse in the global food chains. There would be a mass extinction event, including perhaps our own species, and the survivors would have to fend for themselves in an irradiated landscape. What do you think of nuclear weapons? Are there too many? Let us know in the comments below, and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.